what might happen. Uh, let's take some questions at the back of the room, maybe. The lady uh, there right on the, along the aisle, the glass. Yes, there we go. Hi, I'm Lauren Beer. I'm a freelance writer. Um, I've been to a number of job creation panels over the last year, and one thing that always seems to be left out are how to remove impediments to even existing jobs. And the thing that really concerns me is the growing practice of credit use of credit reports by employers. Um, there's been a bill sitting in Congress forever that's not getting any traction. Six states have passed similar legislation, and I want to know from the panel if this is an area of work they would consider bringing into the task force. There's almost nobody in this country doing any serious work on reining in this practice, and it's creating an underclass of millions of unemployable people, people like me, who have degrees from Oxford and Georgetown and um, cut out completely from federal work, federal contracting, and many, many private sector jobs because of the requirement to have sterling credit, even though credit reports are often filled with errors. Uh, I, I think what we really, uh, there are many, many issues involved in, the, in getting the American economy back on track. Uh, you've just raised one other. There are probably another several, a dozen of employment discrimination problems that exist. Credit reporting uh, can be useful. It can also be very uh, discriminatory, and you've raised that issue. It has to be looked at in the context of employment discrimination of many, many types, and that happens to be one. To get something going in Congress, we can't get the big things going. The overarching issues, uh, and uh, certainly the discrimination issues, are one of the things we need to deal with. Uh, if it's okay with you, Mike, I would like to take this opportunity to ask my colleague, Leonard Boswell, to take my seat. I would like to get out of town before the FAA shuts down <laughs> the aero system in America. Um, so thank you very, very much for the opportunity to be with you. Not often you have the luxury of a re reserve congressman. We've got John. a deep base. <laughs> Please, Congressman. Yeah, the, uh, Congressman, we haven't heard uh, from you, so if you would like to perhaps make it just well, a Well, I know the time's short, and I, I just want to salute uh, Lee, all of you uh, for having this and the thought process. Uh, we are certainly in a crisis, and you all know that. And history is being written, what's it going to say? And that's what's driving me and probably all of you. Uh, I was somewhat relieved. I even asked for Mr. Summers to leave town. I uh, I wonder what we got to do to get Mr. Geithner to leave. I, uh, I'm glad to see him go back and do what he does well. He's a good professor. I uh, would like to see the other gentleman go do whatever he does well. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> we're at a crisis, and uh, we have got to get to building things with American hands. And until we can do that, and all this possibility. Uh, we're going to continue to, uh, to go the wrong way. So I, 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 I think I'll just say this. Uh, I think it's okay, even though the um, amnesia is set in of how we got where we are in this debt deficit situation. But we've got it. We've got to deal with it. It's okay to have the debate on it in front of all the American people. They'll, they'll, get, they'll get it. But we have the capacity to be doing other things, economic development, infrastructure, and all these things you're talking about. Why aren't we doing that? It's very, very frustrating because the country needs it. The country's in great need, and there's some things there that we know we have to do. Go to any state, any city, and you'll find out that we're falling way behind as we think about our Asian neighbors, our European neighbors, and we think we're going to compete. We've got to, we've got to get to doing things. Thank you. I'm sorry for... No, thank you, Congressman. Uh, I think we just have time for one more question. Uh, yes, sir, on the on the end there. So just just two quick things that just really have to be brought up. Oh, uh, my name is uh, Rick Lopez, LPAC TV. So just a couple of things that I think are fundamental to bring up, and these questions are for the most part directed to the representative. Um, one, I think it's pretty obvious that Mr. Obama has uh, come out publicly and pushed the agenda of real brutal austerity, and he's talking about putting Social Security on the table, which most citizens in this country know that means the chopping block. 
And my question to you is, is there going to be some serious resistance against uh, this president? And two, this is a more technical question. Um, if we look at the effects of sustainable technology on uh, third world countries, I mean, it's really murderous and it keeps these countries backwards. You can't run a modern day hospital with a windmill. I'm sorry, it's just not, it's just not possible. Um, and so are, are you guys willing to reconsider technologies that are efficient and, uh, and are actually of a large enough scale to deal with the crisis, such as nuclear power development? I know the media has been hysterical about trying to make people be afraid of, of nuclear power, but I think we need ambitious programs, and I'm wondering if you guys agree that we should have programs like the Apollo program or the Adams for Peace program, which were um, the, the right kinds of programs which stimulated the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yes, the, first of all, there will be resistance to any cuts in Medicare or in Social Security. Uh, Social Security is sound. It does not contribute to the debt. You all know that the data on that. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, looking ahead uh, after 2036, when Social Security is anticipated to only pay 75 percent of, of, of what it's supposed to pay out, not zero, 75 percent, to make up that additional 25 percent for the next, oh, for probably the next 50 years, uh, why aren't we talking about raising the cap? on payroll taxes. Why is it fair? Why is it fair that someone who makes $50,000 a year pays payroll taxes on every last dollar? Someone who makes $500,000 a year only pays on 20 cents on the dollar. Why is that fair? Just by simply raising the cap, you'll have sufficient funds to take care of any problems in Social Security uh, for at least the next 50 to 75 years. So, we're, yes, we're going to resist any, any of those kind of things. L look, there's been a move afoot within the Republican Party to privatize Social Security for years. I can remember in the 90s with Gingrich and them, and Wall Street has always wanted to get its hands on some of that money. Boy, f talk about free money coming in Social Security that they can invest and start to spin around. They've always wanted to get their hands on some of it. You know, so you hear about partial privatization that. So we have to be very careful about any kind of partial types of privatization of Social Security. Um, on uh, energy, uh, the cheapest barrel of oil is still the barrel of oil you don't buy. What do I mean by that? The cheapest barrel of oil is the one that you save, that you don't buy, which means conservation. Uh, we, uh, and here's jobs. Here's jobs, infrastructure jobs. Just um, uh, oh my, uh, rebuilding, uh, uh, that's not the right word. I'm just, hmm? Renovation. Renovation. Renovating the buildings we have in America to make them energy efficient. Huge, huge savings in energy. And there you could lock, you could lock in American-made goods, doors, windows, new heating and ventilation condition, uh, uh, systems, geothermal systems where practicable. Uh, in buildings, retrofitting the buildings of America, which save you, I don't have all the data, but back in five or six years, you, you can get it all. <laughs> and, and, and you employ a lot of people to do that. So yeah, you can talk about nuclear power and wind and all that, and then and a lot of that's okay for the future, but why aren't we focusing on the things that will create jobs, uh, stimulate manufacturing in America and save energy all at the same time, and that is renovation and conservation of energy. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the panel. Uh, I think we have a lot of agreement here uh, on the need for national policies. Uh, here's the report. Read it. Take it home. Thanks so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. So in 2012? I can tell you about that. First time I way past my prime on that one, Cheryl. I know the bank that we did too. The debt and deficit reduction.